Chinese cuisine contains countless different dishes in styles that cannot be clearly delineated. Even more important than the ingredients is the method of preparation. There are literally countless well-kept secrets concerning control of the heat, seasoning, and preparation of the ingredients. In this dark, dry room, Ta Shu hangs sides of bacon. They've now been curing for more than six months. In Tibet, the supply of fresh meat and produce is limited, so Tibetans preserve many foods so they keep longer. Today, Tasha is fixing lunch for his neighbors. Every November, all the people of Nishi Township turn out to fertilize the barley fields. The villagers' farming practices and lifestyle have not changed for centuries. Tasha makes black pottery. He occasionally sells pieces to tourists, but most are sold to fellow villagers for everyday use. Although villagers have modern cooking utensils as well, they like to use Nishi black pottery pots to cook rice, steam vegetables, make soup, and fry breadsticks. People started boiling food around the same time as the invention of pottery. Nishi black pottery is a late development with a history of 3,000 years. Nishi Township in Shangri-La has a very agreeable climate. The residents of Nishi have great respect for the surrounding mountains, where good pottery clay can be found quite easily. <laughs> Black pottery has again become fashionable, and young people are learning the craft. This is Tasha's eldest son. After many years away from home, he's returned to teach drums in an elementary school. However, he also makes black pottery in the village. His dream, in fact, is to start a pottery studio in the county seat. Right now, though, he's busy helping out on the family farm.
Pasha and the other villagers carry on a pottery making tradition that truly is ancient. To fire the black pottery, a pile of kindling is first burned halfway down. After this, pine needles and sawdust are added to the fire. The pottery comes out black, the favorite color of Tibetans. Pottery is not so common these days in modern kitchens, but Nishi black pottery is special. Before the invention of bronze, people did all their cooking in pottery pots and before that, directly over a fire. The invention of pottery was a great cultural advance. <laughs> People here are not interested in an overly refined way of living. They like simple food, simply prepared. Black pottery is used for boiling food. It is the intermediary that transmits the heat to the food being cooked, thereby releasing its flavor. Boiling is seemingly a simple process, but it is the secret to Nishi cuisine. This secret has been handed down for thousands of years and has now become commonplace. In China, serving good food is often a way of giving thanks, a reward for hard work. In nearby Kunming, another kind of pottery cooking utensil is popular. The clay steam pot is used in a cooking method that is a cross between boiling and steaming. Chicken cooked this way is a specialty of Kunming. The liquid in a steam pot boils at the bottom, forcing steam up the central channel. The water then falls back to the bottom, where it is reheated. As the steam from the savory broth rises and cooks the food, the flavors of the broth and food are blended. Steaming, one of the earliest cooking methods in China, is used in countless different dishes. In the town of Juan'an, the Double Nights Festival is almost as important as the Chinese New Year. Today is Ouyang Guangye's 40th birthday, but he is too busy to celebrate as he's busy preparing a large banquet in a nearby village.
the site of such village banquets varies. Shunda is renowned for its cuisine, but it's hard to believe this unassuming kitchen will satisfy the most discriminating gourmet lovers in Guangdong. Ouyang Guangye knows that high quality ingredients are essential for today's banquet. The Shi River flows by Juanan town. In the past, people on the two sides of the river spoke different dialects and ate different foods. Today, however, the river links rather than separates the two sides, but rapid development has not obliterated many ancient customs. Shunde has a population of over a million, including about 300 chefs like Ouyang Guangye, who specialize in village banquets. These banquets for weddings, funerals, birthdays and holidays all provide opportunities for people to gather together. Ouyang quickly sets up his kitchen and begins the preparatory work. During holidays, he and his fellow chefs put on a banquet in a different village every day, and they repeatedly remind young people to respect their elders. These red tablecloths have been used at many banquets. The secrets of Ouyang's open-air kitchen can be observed by anyone. Ouyang and his assistants must quickly prepare the pig after slaughter before it loses its fresh flavor. After the pig carcass is washed, it is marinated in a mixture of salt, sugar, spices and liquor. This step is crucial for the best flavour. Chinese people enjoy hot food, so the longer it takes to prepare a dish, the more careful planning is needed. Steamed dishes, such as steamed pork with kudzu, always play a central role in these village banquets. The sachi kudzu tubers absorb the grease in the pork, enhancing its natural sweetness. This dish is also easy for the elderly to chew. Pork with kudzu is easy to prepare, but Junan steamed pig is much more difficult. After the pig is marinated for three hours, it is basted with liquor and then placed in a specially built steam cabinet. A red cloth is placed on top for good luck and to help hold in the steam. In ancient Chinese, the word for steaming also meant to offer a sacrifice. Sacrificial offerings had to retain their original shape, which steaming does. 
It also spreads the heat evenly over the surface of the food, making it ideal for cooking a whole pig. Villagers are beginning to show up, but the pig is only half cooked. A wire brush is used to prick the skin of the pig to allow excess fat to escape. The ice water causes the punctured holes to close up and the steam to condense. It takes 20 minutes for the steam to build up again, after which the pig is steamed until it's done. The honoured guests at this banquet are elderly people. They receive red envelopes with cash from younger people, along with wishes for a good life. Good food has always been a way to bring people together since ancient times. The steamed pig is the grand finale of the banquet. To ensure the steamed pork is still hot when served, Ouyang and his assistants must cut it up very quickly and sprinkle it with sesame seeds and sesame oil. Ouyang is already a famous chef whose dishes are regarded as as good as those at the best restaurants. How good the guests judge the food is an important criterion for the success of this banquet, but even more important is the spirit of the banquet. Ouyang Guangye is drenched in sweat. But earning the praise of the banquet guests is the best birthday gift he could have hoped for. Steaming also plays an important role in home kitchens, especially for making pasta and noodles. One example is steamed stuffed buns. First, some filling is placed in the middle of a flat, round piece of dough and then the dough is wrapped around the filling. Wai Yang cuisine, which originated in Yangzhou, Jiangsu province, is one of the main regional Chinese cuisines. Yangzhou's steamed stuffed buns are famous for their mouth-watering taste. Seventy-two-year-old Zhu Qianlong has just returned to his hometown of Yangzhou after living in Japan for 25 years. He can't wait to see old friends and eat Yangzhou stuffed buns. Yangzhou stuffed buns are usually served with tofu vermicelli soup. This appears to be easy to make, but in fact it takes great skill to make the vermicelli. Cutting skills are another important element of Chinese culture. The Chinese invented dofu 2,000 years ago, after which numerous variants were developed. A film form of dried tofu can be used in various ways. It's to be cut into thin slices before being turned into vermicelli. This requires a good knife technique 
and even more importantly, great patience. When the vermicelli is put in boiling water, they spread out and lose their mildly bitter taste. They're soon ready to be served with the stuffed buns. The clear seasoned chicken broth is an excellent complement to the tofu vermicelli. People started using coal in their kitchen stoves a thousand years ago, but Chinese chefs found ways to conserve fuel long before this development. Fuel is conserved by cutting ingredients into appropriate sized pieces and shapes. Western cooks use a different knife for each task. But in China, the cleaver is used for all purposes. One technique is to use the flat of the blade, such as in making meatballs. To ensure the meatballs are soft enough, the meat is first chopped into very small pieces. The meat can now easily be formed into balls. The balls are then placed in kitchen broth and simmered for two hours, which perfectly blends the flavors of the pork and chicken. Finally, the meatballs are put into another pot before being served. Every time Zhu Changlong goes to his hometown, he visits his childhood haunts. 25 years is a short time in the life of a city, but it's long enough to make a person homesick. Chinese chefs know that the way they use the cleaver and the size and shape of the pieces they cut directly affects the taste of a dish. In Chinese cuisine, just being well cooked is not enough. Yangzhou, where northern and southern Chinese cultures meet, was once the most important stop on the Beijing to Hangzhou Canal. A world-famous chef, Zhu Changlong, has returned to Yangzhou at the invitation of the Huayang Cuisine Museum.
Centuries ago, Yangzhou was a salt distribution center, attracting merchants from all over China. The blending of their different culinary customs and preferences produced a unique combination of sweet and salty flavors, characteristic of Huayang cuisine. The rich salt merchants held no political position, so they could only compete in the size of their gardens and culinary skills. Recipes from that time give some idea of what Huayang cuisine was like back then. Tofu vermicelli is a real test of hand-to-eye coordination. The soft and fragile block of tofu must be cut into threads the size of human hair. The right hand raises and lowers the cleaver, while the index finger of the left hand guides the tofu. The chef must fully concentrate on the task as he first cuts the tofu into slices and then into threads. The fine tofu threads are first placed in clear water where they separate and resemble a landscape painting. Chefs nowadays often only make tofu vermicelli to show off their skill. Starting at the age of 19, Zhu Changlong studied knife techniques for three years. An aspiring chef must master knife skills at an early age and then accumulate a great deal of experience. This is faux duck. It's made by wrapping bamboo shoots and peppers and tofu skin coating with oil and then searing. Oil heats very quickly. Heating it too long, however, will cause it to burn, but if it's not hot enough, the food won't cook. Cooking becomes easy only once you've learned to control the temperature of the oil. Oil, be it animal or vegetable, is essential in stir-frying. Oil can be heated hotter than water and quickly removes water from the surface of the food as it cooks. It also makes the food more flavorful and crispy. Jo Sai Chuan wears her chef's uniform every day, but she doesn't work as a cook. She is a teacher of culinary arts. She does her best to pass on her 30 years of accumulated wisdom to her students. <laughs> As you can't learn to cook just by sitting in class, cooking school is more like a laboratory than a classroom. No one can become a good chef by mechanically doing homework assignments. <laughs> Tonight, Jo Sai Chuan's daughter is cooking the family's dinner. She learned from her mother and grandmother, both former chefs. Jo's daughter is proud to say she inherited her mother's and grandmother's talent and didn't need formal training. This is a typical Chinese home kitchen. Oil is used in almost all Chinese dishes. Mm. 
Zhou Saichun doesn't assess her daughter's cooking according to her professional standards. Chinese people don't expect home cooked food to be gourmet meals. <laughs> Her daughter, Yang Li Jing, is a television makeup artist. Like her mother, she relies on her hands to earn a living. The hardest part is the irregular hours. But at least her work environment is comfortable and bright. There are few female chefs in China, and fewer still directly in charge of the actual cooking. Yang Li Jing never aspired to follow in her mother's footsteps. China's big cities all look very similar, only differentiated by their cuisine and street life. In Hunan, people's taste in food is similar to the local flower drum opera, i.e. pungent, stimulating, and very folksy. When Zhou Saichun says it's delicious, she means that it's been fried just right. Health warnings never stop Chinese people from enjoying fried foods. Non-natives say that Hunan food is scrumptious and hot. It's scrumptious because it's fried in oil, and it's hot because the spices produce a burning feeling in the mouth. In ancient times, Chinese discovered that stir-frying cooked things quickly and saved fuel at the same time. Cooking with oil was China's great contribution to the culinary arts. This is Zhou Saichuan's kitchen. If you're not creative, but you want to make a good food, you must copy others. Nevertheless, you can't learn to cook by just watching. Zhou has only two years to teach her students how to make it in the real world, and this means that her students need to learn other cuisines. The teacher and students in a culinary school do not have a traditional master and apprentice relationship. Zhou Sai Chuan knows that the students must quickly pick up the skills they need. Most of the students here are in their 20s, and they all want to be career chefs. But they have a long way to go before they learn all the secrets of the kitchen. Mm. 
开始嘬一下，嘬一下，然后拿那个料使劲往你家那个胃口，然后他去煎它，就煎熟了就行。Dong Jianqiang is a famous chef and a fine food connoisseur. It is he who decides when a new dish will appear on the menu. Chinese restaurants introduce new dishes regularly. Braised sea cucumber with scallions is a standard Shandong dish. Each step has strict standards, from simply cutting the onions to the complicated step of frying the onions and adding the sea cucumbers. This is in when we fry the fish, the fresh fish, when we fry it too big, the fish is good. So, for example, if it's fried to six inches, it opens the mouth and there's no water in the outside. So, when you fry the fish, the fish is good. So, when you fry the fish, the fish is good. So, when you fry the fish, the fish is good. Sea cucumbers are not the only expensive ingredient whose preparation is complicated. This is the well-equipped kitchen of a five-star restaurant. And today, Jeremy Leong, a famous chef, is going to make salted duck eggs. As a long-time executive chef, He's rarely seen in the kitchen these days. He recently started a creative culinary workshop on the basis of his experience. He passes on his experience by participating in events at fine restaurants around the world. Jeremy Leong and his wife often travel around the world, and they sometimes find inspiration from their field trips. Jeremy Leong is an ethnic Chinese Singaporean. He became famous for the dishes he created. He understands the chemistry behind both Chinese and Western cooking, and this gives him a deep respect for cooking traditions. This Chinese restaurant in Hangzhou is managed by Leong's group, and the executive chef Ye Baorong is an old friend. Today, they're working on a new dish. West Lake fish with vinegar. Heat control is an important factor in a Chinese kitchen. The level of the heat from start to finish depends on the ingredients and the amount of oil and water in the dish. West Lake fish with vinegar requires careful control of the heat. After the fish is cut in half. One half is cooked in oil, and the other in water. The two processes need to be precisely coordinated to ensure a good result. Sometimes a seemingly simple dish, such as salted duck eggs, can present a challenge to even a famous chef. 
He began soaking these eggs a month ago and didn't discover how bad they were until his friends tasted them. For a chef with a strong sense of curiosity, there will always be new flavors to explore. For a professional chef, the secrets of the kitchen are a kind of slowly accumulated wealth. But for ordinary people, they're often linked to childhood memories. Like all big cities, Hong Kong wakes up early. Li Xianyo knows exactly what she needs to buy without a shopping list. She has mastered the secrets of the kitchen from a lifetime of experience. Evelina Liang Can is a painter as well as director of a charity. She is a naturally creative person. Her understanding of good food, like her artistry, stems from a deep-rooted love that can't be put into words. Two years ago, Evelina Liang Can organized an event asking some of the elders to recall the foods they loved in their childhood and the stories behind them. They then compiled the stories to produce what looked like just a cookbook, but it also reflected the joys and sorrows of childhood. Today, she's going to do follow-up interviews. It's Saturday, but the lunch Li Xianyo is fixing is not for her children. They're too busy to eat. Instead, she's going to entertain an old friend, Evelina Liang Can. Hey, <laughs> Evelina Liang Can is always very cordial with the elderly people, who sometimes make a soup of their own for Liang. The elderly people feel that the new cookbook has helped people understand them better, as though they were master chefs. Li Xianyo's own culinary invention is ground pork sealed in a grapefruit peel with egg white. This is first cooked over high heat and then low heat. She cooks soup and other dishes every day. Although she cooks ordinary dishes, many people still call her Queen of Cuisine. As an important Asian trade center, Hong Kong restaurants serve food from all over the world, as well as offering foreign visitors outstanding Chinese cuisine. Sound 
到啲乜嘢嘢，每人講一個餸俾我。They vaguely remember playing this way long ago when a white-haired woman came to talk about food. Even though they are losing their sense of taste, they still have fond memories of food from their childhood. Although she's very aware of the creativity of elderly people, Evelina is always pleasantly surprised when she sees it. Li Xianyou's children don't live close by, so she's always happy when the young visits. Perhaps the bond between them in that narrow kitchen is Li Xianyou's secret weapon. So, what are the secrets of the kitchen? Some might say it is pork cooked in black pottery, or the amazing knife skills of young Zhou chefs. Others might say it is salted duck eggs that a master chef fouled up, or a bowl of soup held by an elderly Hong Kong woman. The secrets of the kitchen are superficially all about fire and water. But when it comes right down to it, it's all about harmony between people and all other living things. The earth unselfishly provides for us, and everyone loves good food. Thus, the ultimate secret of the kitchen is that there are no secrets.